Right. So the general election. Well, there's a lot of anticipation about when this is actually coming because a lot of people really can't wait now, can they? I seem to have gone to and fro with my opinings on when I think this is coming, because we know it is likely going to be next year. But the Spineless Soon Act has until January of 2025 by law to call it. So it's not a certainty. Now, he set out these five missions of his not long ago, and these have been used not least by me as a way to sort of estimate when the election is likely to come based on how he's getting on with them. Inflation is slowly coming down. This is one of them, of course. Headline inflation anyway, though this is largely irrelevant when it's food inflation and fuel inflation that hits all of us hard in the pockets. And that really isn't coming down in any meaningful way whatsoever. The Bank of England being allowed to drive people with mortgages into destitution for the 14th time in a row now by raising interest rates and the associated knock on effects of that being the Tories preferred way of dealing with it ineffective and where the answer is just to tax the rich and bring inflation down that way but don't be silly demo what would the toys ever do that so he's still likely to miss his inflation end of year target on this i think and if he blows it a sooner rather than later election seems unlikely in the new year given sunak will want to make up for that failure with his other four pledges which if in case you've forgotten it consists of stopping the boats which he will fail on for as long as no safe legal asylum route exists. Grow the economy. Well, good luck with that. As the Bank of England insists, we need to stay poor. And you won't question their independence, despite being led as they are by a complete buffoon. Get the national debt down, which is just a non-starter, when the cash in our pockets literally makes up part of the national debt, along with the debt the country owes to itself, which therefore isn't really a debt, is it? It's always been a Tory misleading statement. It is drivel. And bring NHS waiting list down as staff leave, suffer more real terms, pay cuts, underinvestment carries on, the service remains unsafe due to said underinvestment and staffing levels. All in all, Sunak is on a hiding to nowhere with his little to do list. But now a fact, another fact has come into play, which may turn everything that I pondered on previously on its head. For as much as impending policy failure awaits Sunak over his five missions, the one thing he can't afford, given how scandal-battered and politically weak as he is, is yet another problem, yet another scandal, yet another thing to expose how politically weak he is. And economists are delivering one to him on a plate. They are predicting a recession by the end of next year. The economic equivalent of a punch in the face for the party in power presiding over it. And as many of us already know, it always works out to be the case that the party leading on the economic argument is the one that ends up in power. This report comes from the National Institute for Economic and Social Research. It's a mouthful, isn't it? The NIESR, one of those economic think tank jobbies, who has said the risk of a recession by the end of 2024 stands at 60%. So as much as things are bad for the Tories electorally now, they could actually become even worse for them if Sunak waits too long. The argument in the party now will be those who think waiting is best, still, over those who actually think it could get worse if they do that, and which side of the coin Sunak comes down on over this debate. Adding to his train of thought, though, is the NIESR opinion on where Sunak is with his five missions as well. And this might add to their credibility in your eyes or not, depending on whether you agree with their assessments, which I broadly do. They expect inflation to remain above where it should be until 2025. So Sunak having it by the end of this year seems a stretch by their reckoning too. As far as economic growth goes, they consider that it will continue to stutter, as it has basically been doing for years now, up 0.1%, up 0.2%, a bit here, a bit there, and it has been, for the next two years going forwards as well, at least. So Sunak set to miss his target unless he manages a... A 0.1% growth spurt happens. You spurt. What do they call it? A spurt. Little nubby, maybe. So strictly speaking, on a, a win, as far as his pledge goes, there really is an insult if he thinks he's going to get any benefit out of it. One spanner in that thinking is that 2019 growth levels aren't expected to be achieved until the third quarter of 2024. So that'll be a five-year economic failure that the Tories will have on their hands that they presided over. But Corbyn, some will still say, though, I'm sure, and they'll carry on voting Tory. Bulls. Adding even more stress to Sunak, even more of it, yes, keep, play, keep laying it on, might be the news that a Channel 4 poll held last night on who people would vote for if it were to come true, uh, if, if the poll were to come true, if this election were held now, would mean Sunak would actually lose his own seat if he went to the polls right now. But you've got to think, he's got to weigh that up now against the thought of going to the country during a recession. 
with people losing their jobs as comes with that wages going down and it is always those at the lower end of the economic spectrum that struggle the most so in that regard maybe a recession might not bother the tories as much not their aimed for voters that will be affected but it does do political damage as well it's just the working class ones that'll be affected the working class tories that'll be affected that that ones to daft enough to to back sunak previously in fact the poorest tenth of the population will be so badly hit according to the niesr that to have the same living standards they had prior to the pandemic they'll need an extra four thousand pounds a year in income which the tories would never in a million years cough up neither sunak's lot or starmer's red tories for that matter so it really is the lesser of two evils now for Sunak and which way he decides to roll the dice. Because between failing on his five missions and a looming recession, there is going to be no good time for the general election to be called by him. Oh dear, how sad. Never mind. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did. More content out daily. You might have a video recommendation for you. And not only is the timing of the election a matter of mitigating his losses, but no matter when Sunak does call it, those losses are likely to be huge. Frankly, he's just delaying the inevitable at this point. I'll happily say the caveat in all of this will be how horrible the public are suddenly going to realise Starmer is when exposed to an election campaign and we get to see the real guy with all the charisma of a skip as he has and policies that frankly will belong in one. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.